If you are going to censor the information that students are provided in the classroom, then you should also be censoring yourselves in the name of parental rights. You seem to think that your values are the only ones that can exist and that anything else is the absence of values. I guess the tension needle has shifted away from the don't say gay bill for some reason. You could say it transitioned away from it, but I just can't get it out of my mind. The bill pretends to be a way of protecting children against inappropriate content in the school. Of course, it's just a calculated way of silence queer discourse in schools. It doesn't mention queerness at all, it doesn't need to. Talking about inappropriate subjects is enough. Heteronormative relationships are so hegemonic, no one is going to consider those inappropriate. But when it comes to other kinds of relationships, teachers are going to have a permanent big brother eye over them. And because no one wants to be sued, they are going to avoid queer themes. Thus, queerness in the school is going to be suppressed. Some teachers started a conscious effort not to mention heteronormative relationships as a way of subvert the bill and expose its hypocrisy, but beyond some light fun, it seems pretty useless. From now on, a kid with queer parents, other queer relatives, queer friends, and above all, queer kids themselves will be systematically silenced in class every time they talk about family, home life, relationships, emotions. You know, inappropriate stuff. For too many people, queer families, queer home life, Queer relationships, queer emotions, it's something that, okay, do whatever you want to do, being consensual adults and all of that. But don't bring those things into our schools, to our precious, innocent kids. Heteronormative discourse, as long as you don't go too much into detail, is perfectly safe, you know? There is no problem in talking about it, promoting it to kids. Encourage and lecture them about how being into those normal, traditional relationships is not only good, but mandatory. Pushing that kind of relationships to the kids, shoving down their throats that if you aren't interested in having boyfriends or girlfriends, in the appropriate order, of course, there is something wrong with you. You are less valid. You are weird. What could be wrong about doing that? Well, first of all, there is nothing wrong with being into hetero relationships. And you already knew I didn't think there is. This disclaimer is me just stupidly pandered to manipulative bastards. The next assumption here is that hetero, normal, mainstream relationships are not necessarily about sex. That naughty, naughty sex. Heteronormative love is about community, stability, mainstream society, it's about happiness and being normal and a valuable member of society. It's about family. Apparently, there is no sex in families, only storks. And in kids, hetero stuff is also cute. You go to the playground and you chat with your friends and giggle about how well your son and her daughter get along. They're so cute together, like boyfriend and girlfriend. Or your kids are fighting all the time. Oh, love quarrels. They fight because they like each other. So adorable. They are like real-life Barbies and Kens with little wedding costumes. All of this in kids is like a cute game. It's about holding hands, blushing, smiles, giggles, cutesy things. But queer stuff? That's filthy, slimy, sinful, shrewd sex from the start. Can you imagine two boys or two girls holding hands in wedding costumes? That's degenerate. Degenerate. Grooming. Harmful. I worked in a school for six years, about 450 kids. At the time, I can't recall the one lesbian couple with two kids grooming anyone. What I do remember is the dozens and dozens of the moms crying so excited about how cute are those two playing together. Do you like him? Did you like her? Is he your boyfriend? Is she your girlfriend? Did you kiss? Sometimes talking to 11-year-olds, sometimes 8-year-olds. Sometimes four and five year olds, all the time. I distinctly remember two different occasions, two different four year old girls crying, sobbing, wailing, hyperventilating, getting close to a full blown anxiety attack because classmates, following the parents' example, didn't let them and their respective boyfriend alone and kept going and going. Do you like him? Do you like her? Is he your boyfriend? Is she your girlfriend? Did you kiss? Kiss him! Kiss her! And the girls just couldn't take it anymore, while the boys got confused and bewildered. 
Amazingly enough, there were no legal actions taken. No indignation. Not even the parents of the crying girls got mad at people showing that thing down their four-year-old throats. Oh, poor thing. She just doesn't know how to handle it. Don't worry, honey. Don't exaggerate. It is what it is. In a couple of years, everything will be about boyfriends. You'll see. A very, very polite, suck it up, sweetie. Their own parents. But mentioning queerness is a thing? A valid, perfectly normal thing? No, that's too much. Then I remember, just a year ago, the six-year-old boy of my best friend complaining why everybody is going on and on about he and his best friend, a girl, being boyfriend and girlfriend, and asking if they kissed. She's just my friend, ma'am. A six-year-old having to justify himself, saying his best friend is just his friend. That apparently is normal and healthy, not harmful at all, nothing close to grooming or pushing inappropriate things into little kids' minds. But if I tell those people, the people relentlessly forcing toddlers into imaginary relationships about the five-year-old of one of my co-workers in the school, how he loved to dress up with pink, girly stuff and put on makeup, and how when other people inevitably ask the mom, what are you going to do with that? She just shrugged and went, he's just playing, if he likes it, he likes it. Then that's degenerate. No, you are the degenerate.